back with uh, chapter 11 of King Solomon's Mines. And our heroes are trapped in the, uh, in the mines, buried alive. We spent the next hour frantically searching the passageway for a device that might release the door, but to no avail. We concluded that the control must be in the place of death. Gagool had operated it, then ducked back into the passageway for a last gloat. This risky act had cost her her life. Very soon, the oil in the gourd ran out, and we found ourselves in total darkness, which only added to the horror of our situation. We had a small supply of matches, but decided to use them sparingly. I wondered how long it would take before Infidus came after us, days perhaps, but even if he did, would he ever find the secret entrance to our tomb? Only by our watches could we judge that night had turned to day, and then to night once more. In the early hours of the morning, a thought suddenly occurred to me. How is it that the air keeps fresh? I asked. That stone door is airtight. Good heavens, you're right, said Good. It must come from somewhere. Let's look. We scrambled around the chamber, feeling for a crack in the rock. At last, Good felt a faint gust of air coming through the floor. He rose and stamped on the place. It rang hollow. I rubbed my hands over the ground and felt a stone ring set level with the rock. Heaving with our combined force, we raised the flagstone until, with a rush of air, it fell inside. I lit a match and peered into the hole. I could hardly believe our luck. There were the first steps of a stone staircase. As we prepared to leave, I couldn't resist pausing to fill every available pocket with diamonds from the chest. Won't you fellows take some with you? I asked as good vanished from view. Oh, hang the diamonds, said Sir Henry. I hope I never see another. And so we descended. I counted 15 steps, which ended in a labyrinth of tunnels. We spent the next few hours groping our way along, most of the time in darkness, hoping the ground beneath our feet wouldn't give way without warning. Then, suddenly we rounded a corner and caught sight of a chink of light up ahead. Our hearts full of hope, we headed towards it. As we did so, the rock of the walls was gradually replaced by earth, and the passage narrowed considerably. The air became fresher as we reached the tiny opening. We squeezed ourselves through the gap, and the next second we were tumbling down a slope, a mass of arms and legs buffeted this way and that until we landed in an undignified heap. We struggled to our feet and took in our surroundings. It's the pit, cried Sir Henry. Sure enough, we had emerged at the bottom of the mine workings we had seen on our arrival at the Three Witches. It seemed like a lifetime ago. Somehow we found the strength to scale the side of the crater until at last we reached ground level once more. As we did so, a familiar figure rushed along the road towards us. Oh, my lords, cried Infidus, it is indeed you, come back from the dead. The old warrior flung himself at our feet and wept with joy. Ah, that's the end of chapter 11. I'll be back again next time with uh, chapter 12. Meantime, have a great day, everybody, and uh, take care. Bye-bye.